Well, hello, everyone. We're doing our presentation on physical activity and how it relates to social economic status. My name is Aaron. I'm Katie. And my name's Kiera. And I'm Jasmine. And I'm Scarlett. All right, so first and foremost, uh, what is physical activity? Well, it's, it's def defined as any voluntary bodily movement produced by skeletal muscles that requires energy expenditure. And this can come in the form of exercise, uh, engaging in sporting activities, or even just playing with your kids. People generally get their physical activity in one of two ways, either through occupational or a leisure time. Now, occupational would be just basically through their job, like you know, a UPS delivery guy or a male person will get a lot of PA through just because they're going to do a lot of walking every day. And uh, through leisure time, it's just any kind of physical activity that you're engaging in on your own time. So if you're going to the gym on your own time, playing sports on your own time, that's considered uh, leisure time. Now, uh, in order to promote health and uh, maintain uh, fitness, who recommends uh, that people engage in 30 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic activity for five days a week or 20 minutes of vigorous intensity aerobic activity for three days a week? Now, moderate activity is defined, would be defined as a, a brisk walk, whereas um, vigorous activity would be designed as a jog. So uh, any activity that's kind of the equivalent to those two things will be considered uh, moderate or um, vigorous. So uh, it really can't be overstated uh, how beneficial physical activity it is. It really, uh, there's hundreds of studies that show uh, how it benefits or reduces different types of ailments. Uh, this is just a few of them here, uh, the biggest of which uh, it just reduces uh, all cause-related premature death between 20 and 50 percent. So different studies quote different things, but a few quoted as high as 50 percent reduction in premature death, which is really, really huge. It reduces the rate of type 2 diabetes, which is very common in the U.S. It reduces the rate of many cancers, including common ones like uh, colon cancer and breast cancer. And it also reduces the rate of uh, cardiovascular disease. So you may be asking yourself, uh, how does it do this? Uh, well, there's actually uh, many biological mechanisms that are responsible for the reduction of um, all cause mortality. So, uh, number one, it uh, improves body composition, body composition through reduced abdominal adiposity and uh, improved weight control. It enhances lipid lipoprotein profiles through reduced triglyceride levels and also increasing HDL uh, cholesterol, which is the good cholesterol, and decreasing LDL cholesterol, which is the bad cholesterol. It also improves glucose homeostasis and insulin sensitivity. It reduces blood pressure. It improves autonomic tone. It reduces systemic inflammation, decreases blood coagulation, also improves coronary blood flow and augments cardiac function, as well enhances endothelial function. And last but certainly not least, it, uh, it improves psychological well-being uh, through reduced stress, anxiety, and depression. So we learned uh, quite a bit in this, in this uh, class that uh, stress can affect uh, different chronic illnesses in different ways and it can compounding those symptoms. So by reducing stress, it can vastly improve you know, the quality of life. So you would think uh, with all these benefits of physical activity that more people would engage in it, but that just simply is not the case. Uh, a large percentage of people in the world and this country are simply inactive. Worldwide, 31% of people do not engage in the recommended amounts of physical activity. And the U.S. has the highest amount at 43%, followed by Europe at 35% that don't that engage in or that don't engage in enough physical activity. And uh, the countries with the highest income, like the U Europe and the U.S., typically they have the highest rates of inactivity, with 27% uh, in Africa and only 17% in Southeast Asia. So the richer the country is, the least amount of physical activity that they engage. And by gender. Uh, men uh, do get a little bit less physical activity between 27% engaged in active, or inactive and uh, women are 33% inactive. Uh, so now I'll leave it to uh, Kiara will tell you about the socioeconomic status. Socioeconomic status. According to the American Psychological Association, socioeconomic status is not only comprised of income but also educational attainment, occupational prestige, and subjective perceptions of social status and class. Most importantly, SES is a reliable predictor of various outcomes across an individual's lifespan, including physical health. Um, here I have listed some of the low SES barriers of physical activity, uh, which include but are not limited to lack of time, lack of energy, social influence, lack of willpower, fear of injury, lack of skill, and lack of resources, such as recreational facilities and exercise equipment. And to further elaborate on the reasons for these barriers they experience, um, many Americans who are classified as having 
low socioeconomic status more often have physically demanding occupations that require working longer hours, including evening and night shifts. Therefore, individuals of low SES have less leisure time and less energy to practice in physical activity. Also, low SES individuals live in communities that are not designed for physical activity and that there is no provision of a safe area and or facility accessible to them to actively take part in physical activity. Effects of low physical activity. According to the National Centers for Chronic Disease Prevention and Health Promotion, individuals who do not receive enough physical activity put themselves at risk for health conditions such as heart disease, type 2 diabetes, and cancer. These underlying health conditions are often seen in low SES communities because there is a higher likelihood of sedentary lifestyle and higher body mass due to the lack of social cohesion in their communities and accessibility to health food selections. Um, for heart disease, lack of physical activity can lead to heart disease even if other risk factors are not present. It can also increase the chance for other related heart disease risk factors including obesity, high blood pressure, high blood cholesterol, and type 2 diabetes. As for type 2 diabetes, not getting enough physical activity can increase a person's risk of developing this condition. Physical activity is a very important in that it helps control blood sugar, weight, and blood pressure, and assists in raising good cholesterol and lowering bad cholesterol. Cancer, getting the recommended amount of daily exercise can lower a person's risk of getting cancer, such as bladder, breast, colon, kidney, lung, and stomach. Now onto the disparities between low and high SES. Low SES engage in unhealthy behaviors. They're exposed to environmental hazards, lack of knowledge about their health, low leisure time, lack the financial means to invest in exercise equipment and our services. Health resources are not easily accessible. They do face psychological distress and they have poor community outreach about health and wellness. Indifferent, high SES engage in healthy behaviors. They're exposed to safer environments, they're very knowledgeable about their health and seek medical advice. They're more organized in their LTPA and engage in moderate and vigorous activity. Have the financial means to invest in exercise equipment and services. They also can afford healthier food options and have effective community outreach. In discussing the disparity between low and high SES, there was a study conducted by Stalsberg and Peterson that looked at the association between socioeconomic status and physical activity in that there has been a cause of health-related differences. In the study, computerized searches were used to identify all relevant articles, including all variations of the variables, SES in combination and with physical activity. The result of this study supported previous research that the relationship between PA and SES depends on the PA domains are measured, or which PA domains are measured. So as the study assumed, there was a positive relationship between PA and high SES when LTPA was measured. Therefore, low SES experienced a less amount of PA compared to high SES. Now in the next section, Katie will be discussing theoretical frameworks. So the theoretical framework that we chose to analyze was the reverse capacity model. And this model applies to our presentation because it involves the studies of socioeconomic status and how it affects low SES. This model was develop developed by Linda Gallo and Karen Matthews. Basically, the foundation of this model states that our emotions are affected by our SES. So people with low socioeconomic status are shown to have more stressful events in their life, and therefore they have more negative emotions. And the study showed that people with more negative emotions are less likely to use or have access to health resources and are therefore less likely to participate in health promoting behaviors such as physical activity. So they did a study on 108 women to see what specific factors of SES were affecting the overall emotional well-being and they used EMA which stands for ecological momentary assessment and basically this means that the woman that they were studying reported events in their lives as they were happening rather than basing their reports based off of memory so this just allowed them to gather more clear data 
and they examined a few different factors relating to socioeconomic status, and they found that social conflict and feeling in control of one's life were the biggest correlators with SES. So the implications of this theoretical framework show that overall, well-being is affected by socioeconomic status and some parts more than others. So there's definitely more research to be done in the future and hopefully that will specify what we can do to help with the effect of socioeconomic status on emotional well-being and physical activity. And now Scarlett will be discussing the next section. Uh, psychological factors and um, physical activity and socioeconomic status. Um, this study is um, discussing the well-being and needs satisfaction in eight to nine-year-olds from low socioeconomic status. Um, uh, these, they are being measured with the influence of physical activity. Um, the research methods include um, accelerometers to measure physical activity that uh, children participate in daily, a kid screen questionnaire that is used to measure the well-being of children, uh, the basic psychological uh, needs is a me measure of psychological needs and satisfactions. Uh, the results of this study were that psychological needs were shown to have significant positive influence on children's physical um, activity and well-being. Uh, the connection to the theoretical framework reverse capacity model by Gaio and Matthew is that this study does correlate with uh, the reverse capacity model uh, as there was a positive correlation with physical activity and emotional well-being. Uh, the next slide covers uh, sociological factors of um, physical activity and socioeconomic status. Um, this study called uh, Parents, Social Status, and Children's Daily Physical Activity, the Role of Familial Socialization and Support. Uh, it looks at the effects of um, a family's socioeconomic status on the physical activity levels of their children. Participants uh, were 50 elementary school um, children along with their parents. Research methods included uh, parents' education level. This is um, uh, directed to their um, socioeconomic status. So is their uh, parent net income. Uh, the parents' sports activity questionnaire to see if they um, their, their daily levels of activity, uh, the parents' sports activity support questionnaire, the parents' belief in sports for good, and the sports equipment in the home. This is also linked to socioeconomic status. And um, the results for this uh, research is that parents with higher socioeconomic status are more likely to participate in sports with their children and children with families that have a higher socioeconomic status uh, also have higher levels of sports activities. And the connection to the theoretical framework reverse capacity model by Gaia and Matthew is that children whose parents um, are more involved in their lives are more likely to have uh, positive emotions. This correlates with the findings of um, the reverse model uh, as well. For um, the next section, Jasmine um, will talk about intervention for physical activity. One intervention that focused on this health inequity is JUMP LA. It stands for Joint Shared Use Moving People to Play. Its purpose is to create more access to recreational spaces that influences physical activity. It gives individuals of all ages to have a chance to incorporate physical activity in their daily lives. So spaces like playgrounds, gyms, fields, and courts. This intervention typically comes from a variety of sectors like school districts, cities, counties, foundations, health systems, and universities. Next, onto the findings of this article. 
This intervention has made resources available for low socioeconomic status groups. It has increased opportunities of physical activity in communities that lack free or low cost safe places for physical activity and has allowed opportunities for the community members to talk talk to local school principals regarding access to these spaces to get involved in making a difference. The issue here is that people with high SES are physically healthier because they tend to have more resources. So this is important for society and the future because this keeps families of low SES motivated to practice physical activity by giving them those resources and a chance to improve their health. They will there will be a decrease in health and heart disease and obesity rates, which are common problems in the world today. So this will positively promote well-being and keep communities happy. Happy, And that concludes our presentation. Um, here are the references. 